How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Today I need to retram the mill after the setup uh, from the cement mixer yoke. Retramming the mill, I am going to be using this really nice uh, tramming tool from Boring Research up in Boring, Oregon. Uh, James uh, Long up there, he makes these, it does a really, really nice job. These are really kind of different, uh, is that they have different holes you can put them in uh, to adjust that span for uh, whatever you're doing. Uh, if you have a real narrow vise, you want them close, you need them close together, where if you have a wider mill vise, uh, you can be farther apart. And farther apart, can actually give you a little bit better accuracy. So I'm going to move mine all the way out here and I'm, cause I'm just going to be using the table for, for, uh, for now. And, uh, we'll get these set over here. Now it has a nice little brass thumb screws. It comes with the gauges, uh, half inch, uh, post on it. He even makes the laser cuts, the plastic inserts that are in here even. But he does a very, very nice job on these. Very nice. Oh, engraved on the back. Uh, you probably can't see that. But they're all engraved. So we'll uh, we'll get this uh, adjusted, put it on the outside, so a little wider span. And we'll see how the table setup will go. If I'm wider, hopefully I can at least touch out here on these farther lands when I'm sideways. Otherwise, I'll have to do it narrow. I could always do it right there and right, right there. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah, uh, I just move we'll these to the out. outside, and we can fit there or there or there. Gives a little more options. Now this this one's a little different, of course, uh, than the other ones you see, other than the adjustment. But he put these little. Uh, ridges here so when that indicator sits right down in there it's nice and square to the front it doesn't matter what side they face but it's a no, it's half inch up. call it i'm gonna put in here uh, i can spin it around now the tools for my mill. All I this are all three quarters. These are the four in the front, and then the three over here, and the adjusters. This one, and the one in the top and the back, are all three quarter inch. So you need you know three quarter inch wrench is nice, and then or a three quarter socket is good. And in this case, I need an extension to clear the stem here easily and such uh, so that's all the, that's all the tools I really need you know any hammers or anything now one thing I did all I did was raise this up and it says uh, plus two degrees so it's on the upside and I just brought this up so it's eyed it in in um so it's actually actually uh about two or three to just two or three degrees off here according to the little gauges on the side uh a little bit of cost precautionary when you do something like this uh, when you on the the dropping of the of the head that the adjuster back here has a very large type uh, quadrant gear milled into the head and it's fairly a stout thing so you can crank that up and now lubricate that before you do it put some oil on it. You, you don't use that very often and put some oil down in there so that goes smoothly and if you can help it come up by pulling on it or even putting a little jack under if you want uh, as you do that so you don't stress that uh, out very much but this one here on the rotation of the head this one you will shear off the shear pin that's inside here a pain in the ass to fix uh 
so I had it all the way over. So I was I picked it up just by hand, pushed it up, and as I turned that, and so there was no stresses on it. Uh, you don't stress that. Uh, you will break it, and then you'll end up fixing it. So when you do this, all you got to do is get them close for a rough here, and I'm going to start. It really doesn't matter where you start, but I'm going to start with the uh, nodding downward here. Down and tune it going up, but do it in one direction. My, my table is uh, pretty much centered, left and right, just eyeballed. So I'm going to touch on these two outer ones, and I'm going to lock my table. Now, first thing you got to do is calibrate it. Calibrate your gauge. So make sure your surfaces are clean. I'm just going to take a precision ground flat stone and check the area here where I may touch with the gauge. And it looks pretty good. So the first thing you have to do is calibrate. Now, I'm going to use a piece of round bar <laughs> that's been heat treated and has been ground. Uh, it's not a gauge pin, uh, but the, the ends are parallel. And it, well, it, it doesn't matter what size it is, length or anything. It's just that you want the both sides to be parallel. Uh, this is one inch long, but my grandfather made it many, many, many years ago. <laughs> so, but it's still accurate and... Uh, I use it all the time for things like this. So, so you need something. Put down something. And I just aim for the center of it. Boom, set it up on there. And so it's in the middle. And I put some tension on my gauge. Now I'm, I like to use about a half a turn. And I'll zero my gauge. Now my gauge is about 90 degrees to the table. And I'm on the... Uh, center point of my little uh, setup block here and I'm going to zero my gauge like so doesn't matter which side you do first just pick a side now I like to hold up if if, it, if your dial indicator has a knob on the top I like to hold it up and maybe drop that a couple times just to make sure we, we're staying at zero and I like to hold it up and then I'm going to turn it. Now I'm going to turn around 180 degrees and I'm going to do the same thing in the same spot. This is because your gauges will not be the same. And then come back and double check. I do it a couple times just to make sure I'm good. Okay, zero and zero. Now, now they're calibrated. Simple as that. And then bring it down to the table. Now, this is the one that I used first, and so I know it at zero that this one goes way around quite a bit, right? See that? But this one I know is going to be at zero when I go here. I like to use my little hand feed fine adjust, and what's this telling me is this is way out of square. Now I'm going to bring this one to zero. But look how many times around that one went, and it shouldn't have. There's zero. It should have just been around to there and right there, but I'm way out. If I bring this one to zero, you'll see it's way over here. And you can lock that in. So this one was pushing down first, and so the, the, the head is tilted in this direction, tilted the, uh, out. And that's what my gauge says also, as far as the angle goes. So the angle is this way. So we need to lower it down a little bit. 
Uh, my three lock nuts are just a little bit, just a little, little, little tension on them, just a little bit, so I can lower this down. All right, now let's bring, I'm going to bring this back up. I need to move my table in, actually. And I'm still quite a bit out. Not as much, but quite a bit. Now I'm getting closer. See how this is coming into zero? And actually, I'm past. I'm at zero. See how it coming? This is my turn point to zero. And I went past my zero, so I'm at a little bit, a little past. So we're, now we're going to have to come up. And if I just keep that on zero, you'll see, and then I can adjust to zero. And you just go back and forth with this until you get them both reading zero at the same time. Now we're about, I'm only, I'm only about a thousandth out of whack there. See that? See, of course, zero and about a thousandth. Not much. Now, snug your lock bolts. A little bit more as you get really close snug continue to snug a little bit just just a little bit more because it will affect your reading not too tight you still gotta move it a little bit now that's just me pulling on it I'm just pulling on the head just to make sure it's down I'm gonna do this as I come up and that, that it gives me a little more control on the camera. You probably have a better view of this. Oh, I'm a little bit past half thousand past. So, if you do okay, so we're so close. So, I'm doing it so I'm coming tightening and lifting this out this way. So, I'm going to back up, get rid of the backlash, go back down again a little bit, and then. Then come back to it. Okay, I am zero and zero, and we're gonna we're gonna lock that in. Now I may have to come back. I may have to come back and do this again on this on this part of the nod here, because as I do the other one, we'll see if it things get off. But we'll snug this good for now. So that's good. Now, now we're going to turn it 90 degrees and recalibrate, or at least check our calibration because we're touching in a different zone.
So somebody suggested, yeah, just use your phone. So I could just uh, hold my phone up there or set my phone in there and turn the camera. I could, uh, I could see the back that way. All right, we're calibrated. Okay, this one's not even touching yet. So we need to rotate it clock, uh, counterclockwise, actually. Now these four in the front are just a little bit snug. Just a tiny bit. So you can still turn it with a little bit of friction. And the adjuster is right here. And I'm going to check the gauge. It says I have to turn counterclockwise, about two degrees, so it's really quite a bit. Now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep bringing this to zero and keep adjusting this because we're in the same rotation, right? Just a few, just try to do it a few thousandths at a time because it's easy to go past. Now I'm going to snug, I'm within a couple, and I'm going to start to snug this up a little bit more. See how that's changing just as I tighten it a little bit. It's less than a half. These are half thousands indicators, so that's less than a half. I usually can get this to zero and zero, so this sort of thing. There, that's zero and zero right there. And we'll try to tighten these up. I try to tighten diagonals. Some people use torque wrenches. I don't. I don't need to. Zero and zero. Now we're going to turn it and see how we look on the other way. Now I just turned it uh, 90 degrees and see how we look here. We'll probably have to do a recalibrate. I didn't even need to calibrate. That was a good sign that we're pretty, pretty square. We'll see how we are still. I'm a half a thou over. So we got a tiny adjustment here to do. Red zero. All tight and let's see where we're at and we are zero and zero and double check this without recalibrating we should be fine and zero zero and we're still about a half a thou out so, if we did a recalibrate, 
That, that half towel could be just the table. It's easily that the table could be worn more in the center than out here. We'll just do a recalibrate and just see. Yep, there's our, well, there's our half a thou difference right there. So, this gauge is off a half a thousandth on this, so I'm gonna get this calibrate. Okay. Zero and uh, one two tenths. It's not even a needle width. So the table here is probably or what is a little bit worn, a little bit difference. That's all. Um, we're done. It's not worth trying to chase tents doing this. So thanks you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, tramming the head is not that big a deal. This took about 35 minutes to do. Um, not, not even 40 minutes. So don't be afraid to nod your head, rotate your head uh, with the proper tools. Now having a good tramming gauge is very, very helpful in this. There's other methods you could do this. You can put a swing, swing an indicator around. Um, which is works work just as good. Uh, having a tool like this, there's several people that make these. Um, uh, James uh, passed this to me. Uh, this is not a paid endorsement or anything like that. Um, th this is a very good gauge. I've made my own gauges uh, for this, uh, but this one works just great. But I like that adjustable feature. This is a this is a little different. Most aren't this way. Most are fixed one width where his is not. So if you have a smaller machine, uh, I think this would become a, come in very handy. Uh, other than that, <laughs> and he does a really nice job on it. It's, it's well made. So uh, anyway, thanks you guys for watching. Please check out the merchant bar at the below of my videos and uh, support the channel. Uh, Dovetail cutters I do have in stock. Uh, a few right now, but I will have more soon. Uh, I just have to now that the mills back together I can get some done and uh, I do have scribes and I'm making uh, old some of the old style scribes uh, in the next month or so so uh, Please support the channel and uh, thank you guys and thanks for watching